Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining our session today at Microsoft Ignite. This is the Amplifying Black Voices at Microsoft, and I'm Skylar Dunn, your moderator, also one of your panelists. Um, again, I'd like to thank the panelists for being here with me today, and I'd like to thank all of you in the audience for choosing to spend 30 minutes out of your day with us. So before we dive in, I'd like all the panelists to introduce themselves, and I'll start with Christina. Thanks, Skylar. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Christina Gonsalves. Uh, I am a product marketing manager on Microsoft Teams. Um, and what what else? Hometown, I think you said, Skylar. Um, yeah. So I'm from New Jersey, which uh, I think gets a bad reputation, but I'd like to remind everyone is the Garden State. Um, so it's lovely. And right now I'm in the Microsoft office in uh, Times Square. Um, so yeah, that's me. Perfect, we can go with LC next. Awesome, awesome. Hi everybody, my name is Latricia Howland, also known as LC. Um, I'm born and raised in the great city of Detroit, Michigan, so shout out to the Midwest. Um, however, I did spend about 10 years of my life on the East Coast um, where I went to undergrad at Boston University. Um, after graduating, I spent a number of years in New York City, so I know where that office is that Christina just mentioned. Um, but I went to get my MBA at University of Michigan's Ross School of Business, and now I've been working full-time at Microsoft for about a year and a half, almost two years, including my internship. Today, I'm a product marketing manager on the Power Platform team. Whoop, whoop, go Power Platform. And I'm super excited to be here talking to you all today. So thanks for joining us. Perfect. Thank you, LC. Uh, we'll go with Josh next. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you again, Scott, for putting this together. My name is Joshua West. Super excited to be here. I am actually now an account based marketing manager in our global demand center. So I recently transitioned to a new role about a week and a half ago. So super excited about that. I am born and raised in Philadelphia. I relocated to Seattle about about four months ago. So pretty recently. And before Microsoft, I spent six years working for the Coca-Cola company doing sales and then decided to go back to business school, went to University of Rochester, Simon School of Business and came out to Microsoft intern there where I met Elsie, phenomenal person. She's awesome. And yeah, now I'm back out here with Microsoft working in Seattle. So thank you again for having me for the panel. Perfect. We'll go with Bobby next and then Pierre, you can close us out after Bobby. Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, my name is Bobby. I have been at Microsoft for almost six years now. I'll be six years in January. Uh, born and raised in Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, from Lagos, I moved to Dallas and Dallas to Seattle. Uh, I work at M365, fast track in particular. I'm around the company quite a bit, too. So um, I look forward to chatting with you guys. And uh, yeah. All right, I guess I'll close it out. Hey, everyone, my name is Pierre Darden. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm a marketing communications manager uh, within the CMO. I'm based out of our Dallas office. I've been with Microsoft for about eight years now. Uh, my journey started in the Microsoft retail stores in Cleveland and Pittsburgh. Uh, I then moved into inside sales in Fargo, North Dakota, and now partnering with North American sales leaders. Uh, I'm responsible for developing, defining, and executing multi-touch marketing programs for the SMC business. Uh, I'm very passionate about DNI and I pride myself on, on my hard work ethic, uh, which I believe stems from my uh, professional athlete, being a professional athlete in China, Mexico, and Venezuela. Perfect. So we have a dope group of, of panelists today. And again, thank you guys for joining me. So I guess that leaves me. My name is Skylar Dunn and I'm a second year MBA student at the University of Southern California Marshall School of Business. I was born and raised in Las Vegas, Nevada, um, where I originally took my talents to Nashville, Tennessee, um, to Tennessee State University. So shout out to anybody who's at an HBCU on the call. Um, one thing, one thing before I dive in too deep, starting at HBCU, got told a lot that I wouldn't have a lot of opportunities attending one. But I'm here to shut that down today. If you are an attendee on this call and you're at the HBCU, please don't let anybody shut that dream down. Um, HBCUs are dope. They're meant for us. They're built for us and you can go there and flourish. Um, so sorry, I had to caveat a little bit, but I end up finished my colleg collegiate journey um, at USC. Undergrad again is Marshall School of Business. I'm graduated with a BS in Business Administration, 
where I worked in tech. So I was living in Silicon Valley for about three and a half years, four years before I decided to pivot and get back into B school because I wanted to be a marketer. And that is what prompted me almost to create this series. Um, and so before I get into the questions with the panelists, we're basically here today because I had this idea in my head of amplifying black voices at Microsoft. One thing that I noticed um, during my short journey in tech is that oftentimes black people who work at tech companies are pigeonholed into sales roles. And there's nothing wrong with sales if that's where you wanna be. But a lot of us have other ambitions and aspirations and we wanna be in other functions and roles. And for me, I always knew I had the marketing skill set and I was good enough to do it, but I just needed that opportunity to do so. Um, and so that's why I wanted to pivot back to B school to be able to kind of showcase those talents. And so when I got the offer to Microsoft, I actually reached out to Josh um, and we kind of sat down and talked. I'm like, how can I leave an impact like on my internship? Because internships are a dime a dozen. Everybody in B-School has to go through one. You have to work at somebody's company to say that you did it to fulfill a credit, you know, and be able to graduate. But I wanted to do an internship where I knew that I was going to make a massive difference and be able to leave like my mark on wherever, um, wherever I decided to intern. And Josh kind of helped lead me to the modern work and kind of humans of IT team where kind of told me, Scott, I don't know if we'll be able to get exactly like what you're looking for, but you'll be able to make a difference. So I went to my manager and told her that it was important for me to kind of showcase black talent and how can we do that? How can we have a platform, you know, to be able to showcase that talent and to show people who are interested in getting in tech that it's just not all sales or you don't have to have an engineering degree to be able to work at a big corporate company like Microsoft that you can have an MBA and be put in a marketing role or a finance role or a business development role, that that is possible. So I literally started with two contacts, y'all, my first day on my internship. And from there, I received great recommendations from people that I knew outside of Microsoft, from inside of Microsoft. And this thing just kind of flourished and took off bigger than I could ever imagine. Um, and so I, I'm so, so grateful that it did. I'm so grateful that I got to encounter these amazing people. These are only five stories that are that y'all are going to hear today. Um, but there were so many more stories published throughout the summer. Um, and I just hope you guys have the chance to kind of go back and read and actually reach out to these people and, and hear about their stories. So with that being said, um, my first question is to Christina. Why was it important for, for you to actually participate in this series? Tyler, that was such an awesome introduction and you just completely reminded me of our first conversation um, that we had where it was so clear to me um, how important it was to you to 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 do this work to amplify black voices at this company. Um, and so really the first reason is because Skylar, you asked me to participate in this series and you're just such an awesome person. And so I knew um, this would be really well done with you at the helm, so I was more than happy to help. Um, but and, and secondly, I, I something I when I was very early in career was pretty shy about, but um, that I've been more comfortable sharing more recently is that I practice Buddhism outside of Microsoft. Um, and in my sect of Buddhism, we believe that the spoken word and the use of your voice, be it out loud or written, um, is one of the most powerful forces out there. And uh, so it was really easy for me to enthusiastically agree to be part of this series. Um, I always feel like I have uh, sort of a cosmic duty to share my story whenever and wherever I'm able to, um, and particularly where I was able to overcome any sort of a struggle. Um, I think it's super important to be able to share that. Um, and I think there are two really important um, ripple effects that come out of that. One, uh, people who see themselves in my experience and in my story um, are able to resonate with it and see part of themselves, better understand their um, their own journey um, and be able to grow themselves from it. And then two, um, people who have a completely different experience and have never 
encountered anything like um, those those struggles that that I had been through or that you've been through um, are better able to empathize with your experience and that hopefully makes it so that these struggles happen on a smaller scale and happen less um, or where that particular struggle is inevitable they're able to just be a little more sympathetic and more understanding um, so I think both of those things together make it so that people are more in control and more in the driver's seat of their lives and um, we're all able to just generally be more fulfilled and happy um, so yeah I was just it was important it's always important for me to share my story so I was happy to do that Perfect. Thank you so much for that, Christina. And before I move to LC, Christina was my interviewer, y'all. So Christina is kind of the reason that we're sitting here because if Christina didn't tell me yes, I would have never been a Microsoft intern. So we kind of talked about that before we started. But thanks again, Christina. Like life just comes full circle. I, I had no idea when I was reaching out to Christina that her name, that that she was my interviewer. Like I recognized her name, but it wasn't until I seen her face. Like this was the lady that interviewed me. So it was nice to see the thing come full circle. Um, but thanks for the answer again, Christina. And again, thank you for, for, for picking me to be an intern. And so we're going to move to LC. Yeah, I love to hear that full story element. That's so awesome. Um, but yeah, I'll just start with the fact it's going to be a little repetitive, but um, I was blown away by you, Skylar. Like you, again, you were an MBA intern at Microsoft and you were motivated to create such a beast of an initiative um, to address something that you felt was maybe lacking, you know, the prevalence of Black voices speaking about their experiences in tech at Microsoft, you know, within the Humans of IT blog or otherwise. And, you know, when I was interning, I had a lot of things on my mind, you know, switching into tech from marketing, networking, diving deep into products. And there's nothing wrong with having any of this on my mind or anyone's mind at all. But like, Coming out of, you know, the resurgence of Black Lives Matter movement and all of the attention on creating more equitable experiences. Um, and although I didn't know what I wanted to talk about at first in the blog, I just knew that I wanted to support a Black man, young in career, creating change in such a meaningful way. And the second reason is because um, similar to Christina, you know, writing has always been something that's very cathartic for me. It's a cathartic experience to get my emotions and thoughts out, but I had never written about my journey, you know, as a double minority, a Black woman from Detroit at that, going through corporate America, going through tech, um, being at ad agencies, working in telco. So I wanted to participate because I wanted to be 100% my honest and authentic self in telling my story so that other Black people, women, minorities, um, or anyone could really understand and, and hear my story. So that was my reason. Elsie, you are love. Every time I hear you talk, I just smile. Uh, thank you so much for that candid answer. And thank you so much for the props. Like, I, I appreciate it. Um, let's go with Pierre next, if you don't mind, sir. Are you going to switch it up a little bit? Just a little bit. Just That's a little fine bit. That's fine with me, Scott. <laughs> well, I mean, when I think about it, there are so many reasons why I wanted to be a part of this, this project, both personally and professionally. Number one, it's an extreme privilege to have been asked to participate um, in this kind of discussion. It's extremely humbling and inspiring that Microsoft is enabling uh, this kind of conversation. When I was asked to write the from the locker room to the boardroom blog, I had no idea it would lead to, to this opportunity, but here I am and I'm embracing this entire process. I think it's been a, it's been about six weeks uh, since I was asked to participate in I feel like I've been on a whirlwind tour to prepare for this moment in time, not only to to get to potentially help pay it forward to someone, but I get to talk about an extremely important topic for us all, you know, amplifying black voices. So I'm just very thankful for the opportunity. Perfect. Thank you, Pierre. Let's go, Josh, and then Bobby, you can close us out. Thanks, Skylar. I think one of the things that we're constantly reminded of is that we are black in tech in corporate America. And you know, you'll never you'll never forget that. And when I started out my career at 25, I was promoted to district sales manager in Philadelphia. And Philadelphia is one of the largest cities in the country. It's a majority minority city. And you know, I was the only black district manager managing managing a team in Philly, whereas, you know, 
all the people who worked in the warehouse, you know, were were black pretty much, and all the drivers were black. And I, I'll never forget like walking into a customer account as a gas station with you know one of the uh, my colleagues. He worked my team. He was a white guy, and like this old black guy came up to me. And he noticed that I was the manager and he like, he fist pumped me like, yeah, you know, good going, brother. I, I see you doing these, this great thing. Um, and there was really just no, no way to kind of share that uh, in that particular organization. So here, when, when, when Skylar came to me with this opportunity to like amplify my voice and talk about how I, I got into tech, it gave me an avenue to just share, you know, how this experience has been very meaningful for me and how it's kind of like transformed and given me that opportunity to talk about, you know, my personal background, how I got into tech and how, you know, as black people at a company like Microsoft in the US, that's only 5.7% black, you know, we need these avenues and opportunities to kind of share our experiences, like what we go through and how we got to such a powerful company like Microsoft. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm definitely going to backdoor with that. Uh, I think I think my experience is just just a tad bit different in the sense that I'm an entrepreneur through and through, right? Like my my mentality, the way I work, the way I operate is very not self-serving. But I'm an entrepreneur. Um, so when I started working at Microsoft, I felt like I had to compress who I was, right? Like I felt like I had to put you know this entrepreneurship side of me in a box and just be very Microsoft focused, very professional focused. Um, so whenever I got asked to do this amplifying with black voices, it was more so how can I bring and really show that it's OK to show both sides of you? You know, like um, I'm a DJ, photographer, everything else on the side. And that's my passion. That's my love. That's my joy. Um, and for a long time, I hid that. And when I stopped hiding that, I started DJing for Microsoft. I started doing other things for Microsoft. So I think that there's a necessity to be able to show, to, to feel free in being who you actually are and bringing that whole person to the table. Um, there's no need to try and demarcate yourselves to different locations based on what you're doing. Um, so I think having the opportunity to share that story is why I joined us. So thank you. Absolutely, y'all. Thank you for those answers. Josh, you you kind of hit on something that's affected me my whole life. It's just we're always reminded that we're black, no matter where we are in society, and especially at a at a PWI and even at, at tech. I wear locks. I don't know if you guys can see them. They're braided today, but I have very, very long hair, and I remember being at SC. I dressed just like this, y'all. I was suited and booted daily. You couldn't tell me nothing, um, but I would still get the question, oh, well, what sport do you play? Um, do you play football? Do you run on the track team? And if I had a dollar for every time that I got that question, I'd be a very, very rich man. And so getting a tech, even, you know, before my internship at Microsoft would be, oh, you went to USC? Well, what sport did you play there? And I'm just like, can you give me credit for being smart as you are to be able to get into somewhere and be able to showcase my um, academic abilities and my intellect? and to show that I can compete with the best of the best because that's what Microsoft brings is the best of the best. Um, and I know we're, we're running up on time. This has kind of gone quick. So my second question is, since your story has been published, can you kind of talk about the impact that you've had, how, how have people reached out to you um, e either within Microsoft or outside of Microsoft? And what is one thing that you would leave with the audience? Um, and I'm going to start with Christina again. Yeah, thanks, Skylar. Um, I I wrote my blog post. I wrote about my journey to finding my voice um, at Microsoft, and so I wrote about overcoming this initial period of what was a lot of doubt and imposter syndrome in my role. Um, and I got so many positive responses from people who said that it resonated with them, that they learned tips. Um, and advice and things that they were bringing into uh, their own their own role and their own life. Um, and I think my favorite response was someone who um, I had never met before from another team reached out and asked if I could join um, one of their team meetings uh, and give a session on like overcoming imposter syndrome and finding your voice. Um, and I could just tell that um it was really helpful to a lot of people in that room and that the tips that i gave really really resonated 
Um, so I, th I think there's always a little bit of a vulnerability hangover to use Brene's Brown language after you share um, particularly like hard things. Um, but I think the the positive responses that I got far outweighed the vulnerability hangover. Um, so felt really, really empowered. Thank you so much, Christina. Elsie, we'll move to you. Awesome. Yeah, so to answer the question, I can't say that it has had a significant effect on my experience at Microsoft in a professional sense, but personally, I felt immensely empowered, free, and seen, and I'll explain that. So in terms of being empowered, um, I felt empowered by you, Skylar, and by the Humans of IT blog and Microsoft for the opportunity to just write and tell my story. Um, many of my friends and family definitely see me as a strong, confident, extroverted person, but we all have layers, we have insecurities, fears, and all of that. And so as a Black woman in corporate America and in tech, I don't feel ashamed in saying that I have had experience, I have experienced biases. I have been gaslit. Um, I've been silenced. So, you know, it was freeing because writing about that experience and being honest with those that may have read it made me realize how much I've evolved. Um, it showed me that I wasn't broken by these experiences, um, and I learned from them. That's what led me to get an MBA. It led me to become an entrepreneur, similar to Bobby, uh, to join an amazing company like Microsoft, where I feel like I've been championed since my internship interviews. So, and finally, I felt seen because so many people um, contact me on LinkedIn or text or phone calls, you know, women, men, black, brown, white, and otherwise, you know, that related to some of my experiences. And we're encouraged to read that um, someone else struggled with those things and overcame them. So all in all, my, my advice would be like, do not let your voice be stifled. You will help yourself and so many others by doing the hard thing and speaking up, making noise, advocating for yourself, and just sharing your experiences. Love that. Thank you, LC. Josh, we'll go with you next. Almost similar to LC, I, I just feel a greater sense of empowerment and uh, almost a mandate to ensure that we're continuing to sort other black and brown people here at Microsoft. So, you know, one of the things that I do is participate in MBA recruiting. I, you know, make sure I, I know the recruiters, I'm doing the interviews and ensuring that we, like, we're getting the most talented black people on an interview slate and you know, ensuring I'm helping them and meeting with people who reach out to me on LinkedIn and letting them know like, hey, here are the things that you should be talking about. Here's how you present yourself in an interview. These are the best steps that you can take to ensure like you're gonna get into the final round because we need more you know, black and brown people at Microsoft. Or even so when someone comes to me and says, hey, there's an opening on my team. Do you know somebody who should, you know, I should talk to? And I'm gonna make it a point to ensure that it's a black male or female that you know this hiring manager is going to talk to because that's who I believe we need to empower and to put in these these positions because far too often like new job openings are coming and open and you know I always wait and see like okay are we going to get some more people of color in this in this role so like this particular opportunity is really helping empower me to see like you know this is what I care about like outside of daily work this is what it's going to keep empowering me to to take those steps uh, and, and, to, and to keep working on, on what I find passion in. Thanks, Josh. Providing others with opportunity, that's the name of the game, because sometimes all you need is that opportunity. You just need somebody to see your face and get you in the door. So appreciate that take. Um, Pierre, we can go with you next. Awesome. Um, so I, I would say my, my entire world has shifted uh, a little bit since publishing uh, the blog. Uh, I've been working with my mentor to prepare for this opportunity. Firstly, um, I've enlisted Sydney Mullings, uh, US CMO general manager uh, as my sponsor. I've activated social media platforms, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Instagram um, to amplify this opportunity. And I've received incredible support from senior executives uh, at Microsoft. Uh, in fact, I recently had an opportunity to meet with an AI executive to share my story, uh, Kent Anderson. Uh, a key takeaway from our conversation was about identifying one superpower and then applying it to the market needs. Uh, for the record, I'm still working on my superpower and I know this is just the beginning of a positive course um, in my career and I want to help others get to their goals like I've been helped to get to mine. 
My story is just starting, so I want to thank Microsoft for giving us this, this platform to share our, our experiences with others. Um, what I would want people to leave knowing is, you know, I'm here to inspire and, and pay it forward. Uh, I want to help people that may find themselves in a place where there aren't too many people that share your background. So you may start to wonder, how can you bring value? And I want you to understand I was there and my story shows how I navigated it. And I want you to remember your value is intrinsic. One of the traits that makes something valuable is how rare it is. And if you find yourself in a place where you stand out, and for the record, I am a 6'10 black man, so uh, I do stand out. Um, that's not a disadvantage. That's just, you're, you're just rare and you're special. Uh, embrace your distinctiveness, uh, value yourself and act accordingly. That's my message. Appreciate that, Pierre. Bobby, before before we move to you, I know we're getting a ton of questions in the chat, y'all, and we're we're at already at 156. So if we can't get all of your questions right now, we will do our best to respond um, and make sure that your questions do get answered. So we're, we're so sorry, but you will get answered. I promise you that. Um, and Bobby, go ahead. Okay, I'll, I'll be fast. Um, I think the biggest change was like realize helping people realize they could also do what they want to do. Um, you know, you, you, you kind of write your own story as far as I'm concerned. And I feel like as, if you're an entrepreneur in any form of the fashion, like I had people reaching out to me that really just enjoyed making candles. And they're like, I, I feel like I have to put this on the side because, you know, I have to focus on Microsoft, you know? Um, and so it, it helped me enable other people to equally follow their dreams. You know, um, I don't think one thing has to suffer because you, you work in Microsoft or in tech for that matter. I think you can easily do, not easily, you can choose to do both and make both both happen and um i think it's been awesome chatting with all the folks that have reached out ever since uh the the block went live perfect thank you bobby um one question that i did see that i want us to try to get to is what is your motivation for for choosing microsoft um i know I, i'm not there officially i'm not there full-time capacity uh but pierre you touched on something really important you said senior executives have reached out to you you know since publishing your blog um, I had Chris Capicella reach out to me. He's the CMO um, at Microsoft, reached out to me on LinkedIn, reached out to me um, internally while I was still there over the summer. And we'll still keep in contact um, just to say how amazed he was by this project, my passion, my dedication for, for wanting to do better um, and for making Microsoft be accountable and for making Microsoft do better. And he loved the fact that this kind of stimulated out of his organization, but even more so, of the fact that I was an intern and wasn't scared to get my hands dirty and to go against the grain against anybody saying, oh, this is stupid. This doesn't need to happen. Like, why are you only amplifying black voices? Um, because it's a needed thing. Um, there's two things I can't change about myself. Every day I wake up, I'm black and I'm a man. And so those are going to be the two things that I'm constantly fighting for every day to make sure that my face is seen and that my voice is heard. And so for Chris Capicella, who, if you guys don't know him, he's a, he's a white man you know, to reach out to me and we had this very candid conversation. I'm like, you know, I, I can see why people want to come here because they value you more than an employee number. He actually cared about what was inside of here and not just what I can produce for him on a dashboard or on Excel sheet. So I was very appreciative of that. Um, anybody that wants to, to take it after that, feel free. Go ahead. I'd Elsa. like to, yeah, I, I will say that like, um, you know, I interviewed and got offers from a lot of different tech um, companies. But Microsoft is the only one where I didn't feel like a commodity. I felt like it was a two-way conversation, a reciprocal relationship. And I really did believe when I read the 10K, when I heard about what they were saying about DEI and, you know, backing up with data, that they were truly invested in that. Um, whether that's, you know, race, ethnicity, LGBTQ+, plus, um, ability or disability, um, mental, like it, it was all of that. And I see that every day. Like I said, I'm going on two years in total at Microsoft. And it's a company I really feel like really practices what it preaches and invests resources, money, time, mentorship, championship into its people. And I've seen that as a black woman and just as, you know, a person here. So um, I really want to double down on that. I really feel like we want to make change. If you want to make noise, this is a place that you can do that. Um, so I, I definitely agree with you, Skyler. It's, it's, it's been an, an amazing experience and it's exactly the type of company that I wanted to be at. I think the culture for me is, is so important. And 
that really starts at the top with the the CEO Satya Nadella. And you know, I think he's done this phenomenal job of creating a culture around empowerment and creating a place where people can come and be themselves. You don't have to feel like you know you're somebody else. You wake up, you go go to work, and come home, and, and, and you're somebody different. And I show up to to work the same way I would show up with my my friends. And it's provided like a lot of opportunity as, as well for me to just share my story and, and and you know talk about you know being you know, stopped by the police and in my own apartment building and what's that like and what's it like being a, a black man in America and I think Microsoft really you know has given me the opportunity to do that and it's really like the leaders within the organization who are have done a better job of understanding that and giving us the the space and listening to us so we can amplify that and talk about it so some of our other colleagues can see some of the experiences that that we go through as as black people in America that you know again sometimes they're largely blind to because they don't grow up understanding or thinking about that on a daily basis thank you josh anything christina pierre bobby you guys want to add before i close this out well i would just like to say i just feel like microsoft is is a place where um you can be successful at least you know for me and success for me is is having having the great fortune to, of working for a company that was just named world's most valuable uh, having opportunities like this to tell my story and continue to expand my network learn new skills and show up exactly how i am uh, on a day-to-day -day basis uh, i love microsoft for that yeah i think i think joshua you said it so perfectly of like you can be the same person in work and with your friends like taking away just being I feel like I can be my full self, my whole like authentic self. Um, and I felt that, you know, in the interview process and I feel it still now in my in my day to day work. Um, and it it's such a difference from the like past work experiences that I've been in and you don't even realize how much energy it takes to like put on, I, I don't know, a different a different voice or a different hairstyle or different clothes like just to to fit in somewhere and I, I feel like at Microsoft you don't have to do that show like you just are accepted for yourself um, you're valued even for for the differences that you bring to the room so um, yeah that's been awesome yeah yeah and I think that the same thing with me um, my first three years at Microsoft I was on the road more than I was in Seattle um, because they let me go to the different HBCUs they let me go to the different black conferences they let me go to all these different places so at first I could bring more black people to Microsoft but equally as a black engineer I could be places that I needed to be find places to plug in I remember when I first started in 2015 um, I, I was the only black person in my building like there was nobody else. Now, if you walk on my, well, like 2019, you walk on Microsoft campus, there was, there was a bunch of us. It was like, oh crap, like we're going to go to A3. Um, so it, it, it's cool to see, like actually see that there's a difference in the company. Um, Microsoft, it, it's, it's not just talk. Um, and, and then if it is just talk, they give you opportunity to make that difference, so yeah. Perfect, thank you for that, Bobby. I know we're a little over time, but I just wanted to take these final moments to say thank you for all the attendees who took time out of their day to come sit in our session. I want to thank the five of you again for, for just being phenomenal young black professionals and, and continue to be amazing in all that you all are doing. Um, and lastly, I think if it's one thing that I want to leave the audience with is that never be afraid to be authentically you. All you need is one person to recognize your greatness, and, and I promise you it can be the, the change in your life, a, a different career trajectory, a different life path. So never be afraid to be authentically. You always bring your whole self to whatever you're doing. Somebody will notice your light and I promise you, you'll be OK. So with that, I say thank you for attending the Amplifying Black Voices session this year. I hope we can continue this conversation again next year at Ignite. Again, my name is Skylar Dunn. Please connect with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever the case may be, Twitter. Um, yeah, you can find us. Um, and by all of our names on LinkedIn, and I hope to continue the conversation with you all. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.